ask you, John, from the second period, uh, would it be fair to say the scrap with your former teammate, Brendan Dillon, was part of you finding your game? Uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, didn't play much in the first period, so I thought I uh, might as well get into a fight and uh, take seven or eight minutes in the box. Okay. <laughs> Overall, how would you measure the level of urgency by your team tonight versus three of the four games you played to start the season? Yeah, I think we've been, uh, obviously, we're one and three were urgent. Uh, we want to win on home ice, and um, you know we're not in uh, the business we want to be in. So we have to have that urgency, and we're gonna have to have it in the third period. Thank you. Thanks for sure. Can I ask you something, please? If if a teammate, if a player said that in an intermission, would that get around the dressing room after tonight? I'm sure somebody's gonna clip this on social media, and it, it will be it will be viral tomorrow because guys just don't do this. They don't take a shot at the coach mid game about their ice time. I think it's it's hilarious. So. But I, I don't know if it's if it's the right thing to do. If you're frustrated with your ice time, maybe that's a conversation with the coach behind closed doors. Like this thing's gonna go now. And it may be, be a little bit of distraction, but and I actually liked Evander Kane's game. Like if he wasn't getting a lot of ice time, he's running around, he's fighting, he's throwing big hits, he's doing what he can to help his team. But that might cause him a little bit of a distraction. I still don't mind when guys are defiant, though. And, you know, maybe it doesn't look great when you're saying that about your coach. But, you know, he's sticking up for himself. He's a proud guy. And he has been contributing well for the Oilers ever since he's been there. And, you know, every once in a while, you got to stand up for yourself. I, had, I said this. But let me come to you with Evander saying what he said. There was a hidden, perhaps not so hidden, part of that where he talked about not being on the ice much. So he would spend eight minutes in the box. Yeah, the reaction to that. And I'll preface this by saying this. I've known Jay Woodcroft, their head coach, since I was young. We played against each other going, growing up in Toronto as kids, and I have the utmost respect for what he's done to this point. So Woody knows that. But when a player wants more, I don't have a problem with that. Because if Andrew Kane's saying, I know I can contribute more here. I can be a 30-goal, 35-goal guy in this group. I could have as many between 8 to 10 fights. He had one last night. Mm -hmm. Those are unique players. You don't have very many of those players in the National Hockey League anymore. That's Brady Kachuk territory. It's Tom Wilson when he was at his peak. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot of those guys around right now as power forwards that can really impact the game. So, yeah, he was just saying, in, in not so plain terms, I want more ice time. If I'm not going to be on the ice, let me get in the tilt. Let me help the team somehow. Yes. So I think that was a little bit of a rallying cry from, from Vander Kane to say to head coach Woodcroft, hey, man, you know what, I'm ready. I'm primed. I'm in great shape. I'm ready to go, and I think I can contribute.